We do a lot of lake shows every year, and usually it's with Brian or my brother Dale. But this year, Brian gave me a call and said, hey, come on over to the East Kootenays, uh, and not our traditional East Kootenay lakes. Normally, it's white swan, white tail. That's right. We're way over in these water yes. we've never fished so before. Well, today we're on Summit Lake, yeah. uh, east of um, Fernie, right. just past Barwood, right on the Alberta-BC border. And it's the first time for both of us. And there's fish rising here. Wow, we saw it. You know, we've always looked at this lake. We heard a winter kill a few years back. That's right. But you guys, like Freshwater Fishing Society, have done a great job in stocking this lake. Uh, right, you put trip white in here? Yeah, there's trip white penask in here. There's um, cutthroat. And there's some eastern brook trout here. I don't so. Know. so it's a well managed lake by the ministry. Excellent. Well, hopefully, we're going to get a few fish today. So that's today, Summer Lake, as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Can't wait to get this bobber out there. <laughs> Look at that big dome. Hey. I think it's the technique. I think it's the fisherman. <laughs> some days are good and yeah. some days are better. <laughs> <laughs> A lot better. Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander, builder of world-class fly float and mooching reels. The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. The Freshwater Fishery Society of British Columbia. Catch what you've been missing, go fish BC. fly out. Well the only thing you know it's the Summer Lake it's a pretty lake. First cast fly's been out there for five minutes. Just a phenomenal lake and there's big fish right we got the potential to catch what five seven pounders oh, today? Oh absolutely today yeah man. there's a, it's a, really a trophy fishery. And here I've got a nice you know two pound fish but this is generic and they're they're a dime a dozen. Yeah. They're all over the place. Look at this. Still Crystal. water yeah. and we're still getting them. Yeah. Goes yeah. against the fresky rule. Yeah, I know. I have no fresky riffle and I'm still catching them, but they want a little movement, right? You gotta Absolutely. give it that little movement. Yeah. yeah. Some of lake too, you know, we got the big trains going into Fort and Cole. That's the only thing, isn't it? Yeah, we've got a highway here, but you know what? This, this <laughs> fishery tells you you don't have the, the best fisheries are often the easiest to get to. Yeah. Like we're literally 200 meters off. Bye. Great access, so Summit Lake here, they've got a real nice boat launch, even a little camp area you can sit. I mean, it's not ideal camping, but again, it's a, it's a great area, easy access. Uh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna get this guy in, show everybody. It's not a bad fish, good starter fish. Oh, man, and look at this water, it's crystal clear. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> good job, Bill. Ah, thank you, Brian. Yeah, pretty fish. So we started off in about, you know, 16 feet of water. We saw a bunch of fish activity. And again, a good starting point is where you see those fish. You know, we saw a lot of happy fish. And what we mean, what we mean by happy fish is fish jumping. You know, fish rising, coming up to the top. So we know they're around. So I put on one of my deep, deep water patterns. You know, it's a great little deep water pattern. It's one of my tricked out chromids that I always start with. And here he is, just a nice little guy, you know, a little pound and a half, a couple pounds. Good starter, good starter fish. Oh, pff, pff, pff. <laughs> look at this. He just, <laughs> he just soaked me. Oh, man. Refreshing. Oh, was it ever refreshing? I can't grab him by the tail. He's too wiggly. There he is there. Look at him, look at him. He just soaked me. I'm just covering, but I'll just let him go. The sacrifices you make to catch fish. Never put the tail towards your face, because this is what happens. <laughs> oh, 
Oh man. That's <laughs> nice. You really got me. Oh, you really got me. That's nice warm, nice cool water. Okay, well I'm gonna clean off and get my indicator back out there. Wow. Good start. That's a hot fish, Don. Is it ever? Wow, that's cool. what we came here for. Look at that. That's a beautiful canal. Beautiful. You know, that's again a four or five pound fish, oh. isn't it? It sure took off. Right in front of the boat. Oh. <laughs> right in front of the, over the side, over the side. Right by Brian, right by Brian. Oh. Oh. oh, that's a hot fish. Again. Gee, have you ever fished this? You've never fished this lake before. Nope. Like this is crazy. This is this is just phenomenal. I just heard always about it. You know, it's a great early spring lake. I've heard, and then uh, so early really, spring. What do you mean by early spring? Like May? Uh, April, early April, May. Okay. And uh, we can see we're here midway, mid May, and we can yeah. see the weeds are already starting to grow up, even in the middle of the lake. So you think by June should be pretty choked up in here? But up. then I understand that this lake fishes very well in the fall. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. September, October yeah. again. September, October. This is a hot fish. Wow. It's just what it's like. These are incredible fish. I'm getting tired of fighting this guy. Look at that. Oh. I don't know what, good. Brian, I think we should take a throat sample. Oh, that, I mean, they're eating this tricked out chronic. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a gun gray, brownie gun gray with that with the wing buds. Yeah. But the orange wing buds might be the ticket. That is a gorgeous fish. Is it ever? You, know, you want a throat sample? Yeah, we should. Yeah. Oh, like that. Dude, look at that. That's a gorgeous fish. Get the water out of it. See when it's wet. Slide it in. Esophagus? Because we have oh, no idea what they're going to be feeding on. We know they're chronomids coming yeah. up. Yeah. Now look at this guy down. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That is Isn't a pretty that fish. gorgeous? Look at that. Oh, what Beautiful. a pretty fish. Just chrome. Hey, how long is that guy? He's 20 ish, yeah. 21. Oh, yeah. Just beautiful. Beautiful fish. But chrome. I love that. That's why I yeah. love trip lights. Yeah. Look there he goes. He just... Oh, thanks, Don. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what he was eating. Let's have a little throat sample and see what. Uh, well, you know what's going to be chronomids of some kind, right? You know, I was going that with before. Look at that. Not, so not he's just sure. starting. Just he's starting. just starting. That's good. Well, I mean, we just got here. You know, it's going to be a warm day. It's supposed to be exceptionally warm yeah. today. Yeah, one little yeah. chromy. One little chromy. Yeah. But the, the beauty of the, I mean, the, the fishing right now, it's spring, mid-May, but when we look at our depth sounder, yeah. it's 54, 54 degrees, degrees surface. I mean, that is 50 to... 50 to 58 yeah. degrees, the fish are going to be hot. And that's critical, right? And you want critical. that anything above what, 48? Yeah, anything above 48, then you yeah. know it's warm enough for the bugs to start yeah. going, and those fish are going to be hot. Today on the bench, I'm going to tie you up Dawn's deep water chronomid. This pattern is very effective for what I consider fishing deep water. That's anywhere from 15 to 20 feet, or 20 even down to 50 feet. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a size 10 scud pupa hook. We'll tie with some 8-aught black thread. For the first bead, we'll use a 3-32nd inch white bead. For the second bead, we'll use a 3-32nd silver. We'll use some orange mono or floss for the buds. Some large holographic tinsel for the body. Some black ultra wire for the rib. And some hard as nails coating for the finish. To start the fly off, we always put our thread onto our hook first. And what I'm going to do is take my orange floss, I've got some orange floss here, and I'm going to extend it out, you know, a good, a good foot. And then I'm going to cut it. And I want to build up a bit of floss, I actually want this to really stick out as a bud, so we'll, I'm going to put it in half, you know, and wrap it over together. So i got a double layer, and actually I'm going to do it again, I'm going to fold it over a fourth time and then kind of spin it together. And that gives me a nice, fairly, fairly thick orange strand. And then what we're gonna do is put this over our thread underneath and tie it in right at the eyelet. And when your floss is finished tied in, you should have one strand on one side, essentially on right on the side of the hook, and of course the other strand on the other side Again, at a nice even and parallel with the hooks that you want them because we want to bring those over the beads after on the sides. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wet finish right there and put our beads on. 
and that's the next step. So now that I've whip finished off my thread, I've moved my first bead, which is the white bead, so that's going to imitate our, our gills at the front of the fly. And then I've put my silver bead on second. And the reason I'm using two beads is I want a bit of weight. Uh, it, with the white bead solely, it doesn't quite get down as quick as I like, so that's why I put the silver bead on. Uh, accentuate the fly a little bit and it helps it get it down. So now what we're going to do is retie on our thread and bring our, our strands back to form our wing butts, and I'll show you that right now. Now that I've built up a nice dam of thread behind my beads, so my beads actually can't move, I'm going to take my orange mono that you see out the front, and I'm going to bring one strand back on one side and one on the other to form the wing butts. So we'll bring one strand back now, and tie it off, and you want these to be kind of parallel, like right on the side of those beads. And bring your second one on the other side, and tie it off. Wrap back a little bit and cut off your excess. Now that my wing buds are tied in, I've got some black ultra wire. And it doesn't have to be ultra wire, it's just got to be very, very thin black wire. We want to keep this pattern uh, quite thin on the body, but again, it is a deeper water pattern. Once we coat it, it is going to be fairly big and fairly thick, but that's okay in the deeper water. So anything that you want to substitute for black wire is fine. So I'm going to tie this in right at the back of the hook and kind of you know, almost halfway down the hook bend because I want this fly to really extend and be quite large. Once the rib's tied in, take a little bit of your holographic tinsel, and I like to use the large. Again, it covers, uh, covers a little more volume on the body of the hook. Tie it in, again, right at, the, right at the rear of the hook. Move right down, about halfway down the hook shank. Bring your thread back up to your silver bead, and wrap your holographic tinsel forward to form the body. Next step in the fly is to take our, take our wire, our black wire that we had off the back, and again form the traditional, you know, five to six ribs up the fly, just to segment that chronomid body a little bit. And tie off behind the bead. The last couple of steps of the fly are to whip finish off, so I'm gonna Take my whip finisher and I'm going to, again, whip finish right behind, right behind the silver bead. And I like to do it a couple times just to make sure this stays secure. And once we've whip finished, we're actually going to take our hard as nail finish and completely cover the fly. Now this is going to make the fly quite bulky. It is going to be a bigger pattern, but again, remember this is a deep water pattern. So make sure you coat it up, especially the wing buds. You don't want that falling apart and this will really set off this pattern. It protects it and makes it translucent down in that deep water. And of course you have the, you know, the different colors that really accentuate it in the deep water. This pattern is very effective when fishing deeper water, mainly because it has all the ingredients you need when you are fishing deeper water. It has the, the holographic tinsel, if there's light, low light penetration, it really gets accentuated down deep. And it also has the orange wing buds that you need something fluorescent down that deep to really set the pattern off. So if you're ever gonna go and fish deeper water, you know that 15, 20, 50 feet, try this pattern out. It's gonna be very effective for you. And you know, this is just starting. Look at the chronomy checks. We've got mayfly starting. Look at there's a mayfly right May. here. There's our first mayfly coming off. Right at the raw tip. We got chronomids everywhere. Well, I bet you we'll get may fishing today. So we'll probably get may yeah. fishing today. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's the that's the great thing about spring fishing. It's yeah. just like you shouldn't have to work. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not. That's right, you shouldn't have to work. You shouldn't have to, if you, but if you, if, if you have all the tools. Now, that was a good point. You've got all the tools where you've got a clear to me to sink for mayflies. You've got chronomids for your, or dry lines for your leeches and chronomids, right? Yeah. You've got to have all the tools. Yeah. Three basic lines. So what do you want? Come full, with. Full floater, yep. clear intermediate. And your full sink. And a full sink type What's three. What's a full sink one? Wow. Well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Our favorite pattern. Oh, let's get these guys in. Man, man. Double headers, crazy. I got mine. Yeah, and they're, they're identical, aren't they? Yeah, right here. Look at this. Just clones. And they're just beautiful. Just chrome balls. Look at that. We're going to get wet. You know that? 
That's phenomenal. <laughs> you know what? Every time we come out, we have such a blast. Like we always catch these kind of fish. It's just so great. Yeah, we're lucky. Oh, I mean, I know. So we've lucky. got so much such good fishing. We've well, only been out here for a couple hours now, and you know we're gonna fish this way for a while. Hopefully, a little later Mays. on the show. Maybe you know what? Maybe we'll go to Mayflies yeah. a little later on. That was good to see that May there. It was, wasn't it? Well, the water temperature's prime. <gasps> Fifty-four. You know she's gonna start That'd rocking. That'd be great, and then we can show everybody some Mayflies. Stuff. Absolutely. Nice. I'm gonna show you how to tie the non-slip loop knot, also known as the 97% loop knot. So this allows your flies to pivot under an indicator or on a wet line when you're stripping them, provides a lot more action. So I've used, I've got obviously thick uh, material here just to demonstrate. So we take our tippet, and we put an overhand knot in it, just like that. Simple overhand knot. And then we put the tippet through the eye of the hook. We make that knot as small as we can, bump it up right to the eye of the hook, and then pinch it off like so, so it's not gonna move. Then you take four wraps around the main line, and then take the tag end, and you place it back through that overhand knot. And keep that over, overhand knot small and pressed in. I wet it like so, and then just pull on the tag. So there's the completed knot. When, you, when the knot is finished, if it's tied right, the tag end comes off at a 90 degree angle, just like that. And then we just trim it. And there we've got our non-slip loop knot. And the fly just pivots. Got a good one here, Don. What do you got, Fry? Nice one? Right. Yeah. Took a couple really good runs. There's some weight to this guy. Well, that's the beauty of Summit, right? We're getting two, three pounders steady, and then, but you got the chance for the big seven yeah. pound guy. So you got to multitask, right? You got to be able to net oh, and look at your indicator. What a beautiful rainbow trout. Okay, indicator's out. Have the guts oh. to put my rod down. You just make sure it's. Not going anywhere. What a tank. Oh, well, thanks, that's, that's a five pound fish bro. Oh, yeah. Isn't it? That's close. Oh, we'll that's pick gorgeous. it up. And have a look. But, oh, a little chronomid in his upside down and the tip of his nose. And you know, big fish eat chronomid. That's all there is to it. That's big right. Big fish eat chronomid. Oh, there, there's so many of them down there. It's an easy food source. So they just gorge on them. Yeah. Just open their mouth and swim so through them around. and they see ours and go, oh. There's another one. I like that one. <laughs> Here's another one. So. Oh. It's stunning. Oh, hook's out. Oh, that is. Barbless hook. So, so that is another triploid fish? Yes. Yeah. yeah they're, so that's they're, the beauty of the triploids. They stay chrome. Uh, they're just a spectacular fish. Look at this. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Oh, oh man. Come that's a drink. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> Isn't that a pretty fish? No, that's got to be 24. Yeah. 24 plus. Yeah. Oh, cool. It's gone. And weight on. Thick. And they're wide. They're wide so across the back. That was what, five, six? Or yeah. Five and a half. Five, and, half. five and a half. Yeah. They're heavy. <laughs> when we come back, some more great fishing from Summer Lake. This is, this is spectacular. time to take a break you know it's kind of hit the uh, afternoon lull I mean yeah. we're still catching fish but it's a uh, good time to show everybody the feel of the patterns that we're using yeah so basic spring patterns that that you, you want to have in your fly box I know, I know we don't fish them as much as we should but you know we definitely need the, couple, shrimp. Uh, the shrimp patterns nice. you know a bigger one for the gamrus and then the smaller high level shrimp or certainly ones you know but they're, they're always available, so you want to, yeah. and they definitely eat them in the spring. Fall, winter, spring, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And then we <clears throat> we certainly go from there to the chronomids and, uh, you know, the, the one, the go-to pattern to start at. Black and red. Black and red. Isn't it? Yeah. Black and red with a white bead or even a silver bead. It's silver bead, doesn't yeah. matter. And then we, we always end up fishing some type of silver chromey yeah. type pattern. So you got the chromies. As they're gassing off, coming to the top. That's right. Taking on that. They're getting shinier and shinier as they come as up. They rise. Perfect. So other spring patterns definitely, we have to go back to the other side here, are leeches. Got enough flies? Yeah. And 
whether they're maroony black ones. My favorite. Yeah. There's one of my favorites, and my little green is also or the, or the more maroon yes. ready ones yeah. um, are, are all good. And then later in the spring, well, actually this time now, because we've already seen them today, are mayflies. So we can get pretty basic with a bead-headed pheasant tail nymph. Oh, yeah. And then if if the fish get really picky on the, on the maze, you have to take off the beads and just put a non-bead headed one on there. Right, very, 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 very slim. Yep. So those are, that's a good selection of the early So early you've got spring. the shrimp, you've got the chronomids, you've got the leeches, and you've got the mayflies. And that covers, you know, you've got patterns of those in your boxes, you're off to a good start. And then the damsels, the dragons, come more summer. summertime. Yeah, more summer. Caddis, right, Caddis, the big uh, sedge. Yeah. But you know what, for how much we really fish the dragons, damsels, and sedge, it's, you know, it's a two week window for me. Yeah. Two or three week yeah. window. Yeah, it's the chronomids as we, it's, it's the longest. It is. The shrimp, chronomids for sure longest, and leeches. I Bailable think those three out. are the longest. And then you get the mayflies and then the sedge. That's right. Out. Yep. Excellent. I don't even have my rod in the water anymore, Don. I know, I'm tired too. Are you done? I'm done. It's, it's amazing. It's been just a phenomenal day. And what a way to finish off. You know, it's gone dead calm. It's really not even halfway through the day, is it? It's kind of mid-afternoon. Mid-afternoon, but that's when the hatches start to thin off as well, and, yeah. and we lost the riffle. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I, I don't feel I'm uncomfortable without the rescue riffle. I'm not confident, but good fish to finish off on this. You know, even though these fish aren't huge, some of these, like two, three pounds, they're oh. great fighting fish. These what are, a fishery. That's a tremendous yeah, yeah. resource. Fantastic. Beautiful part of the province. Unreal. Oh. So remember, when you come to Summer Lake, you got to take care out here. Conserve the waters, and you know what? These guys here, the Freshwater Fishery Society of British Columbia, buy your fishing license because that's where it goes to, producing these great fish. All Absolutely. the hatchery guys is fantastic. And we'll see you next time when we take you sport fishing on the fly. Oh, wow. Well, that's right. Show about. everybody this guy as we let him go. Nice little fish. Just a little <laughs> guy, he fought great. They pull. Oh, they pull. Excellent. Great day. Great day in the water. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.